before I start, uh, let me state that we have heard such amazing stories of courage and heart earlier today, and I feel truly humbled. So good evening, everyone. Today, I want to tell you some stories of belief, self-belief. And these are stories from my life. It was 1978, and I had gone to Dhanbad you know, to do an audit. Tanbar is a, is a, is a coal city uh, in, currently it's in Jharkhand, Bihar those days. And it's called the coal capital of the world because it's the largest aggregation of coal fields in the world actually in Tanbar. But just a wee bit of background to give you the understanding of the story. Uh, in 1969, coal fields were nationalized. And this was 78 and over a period of time, these last eight, 10 years, some local practices had developed, which were not all above board. So my team and I, we were doing the audit at Tanbad, and we came across certain discrepancies. And we decided to investigate why these discrepancies are there. So during the course of the investigation, one afternoon, we had a visitor. He came in and asked that he would like to meet the head of the audit team. So the team directed the person to me. So he came up to me and says that, uh, can I speak to you for a few minutes? I said, sure, you can do so. So he tells me in Hindi, In other words, why are you doing all this investigation? What, what purpose does it serve? Just forget about it. I looked at the and said, well, I don't know who you are and why are you giving this advice? So he says, he said, I'm your well-wisher. And then of course he left. So clearly there was a, a veiled threat that, you know, please stop all this investigation. Do not do these things because it's not good for you. I called up my head office in Kolkata and informed them that this is what has happened. Uh, what do you suggest we should do? And a considered view from head office was that temporarily suspend the audit and come back to Calcutta next day. So in the evening, I went to see the manager, because obviously, since you're going to move out for some period of time, at least, I went to meet the manager, the finance manager, who was my contact point out there, and uh, informed him of uh, our decision to travel back to Calcutta. He was half expecting it. Perhaps he knew about this visit already, and he knew what might have transpired. So we said, well, okay, fine. If you, if you want to do that for some time, we have no objection, no problems, it's perfectly okay. And when I was standing up and about to leave, uh, he asked me a question. He said, uh, do you believe there are discrepancies? I said, yes, of course I believe. My team clearly sees that there are discrepancies and I believe that they are, they are there and uh, we want to obviously know what they are all about, where they're coming from. Then he said, are you planning to do something about it? There was virtually a, a pleading voice saying that, please do something about it, right? It was a, a reminder of a moment of truth for me, okay? So what I did the next day was I sent the rest of my team to Talcata because safety comes first. I stayed back. I did some more investigation and led to some outcomes. And of course, that's another story. So what followed that is not the meat of my story in any way, but the fact that he was able to kindle in me a certain value, a certain feeling was is part of the story that I'm trying to tell you. Obviously, it was going to be difficult to stay back and continue the investigation. But that's what I thought should be done because I believed in something that I think was right. 
But this was not the first time that I had got this lesson. These values were instilled by me, instilled by my mother, actually. Okay. Well, she had little formal education, but she was very well versed with what's happening around in the world. She understood people very well. I want to backtrack a few years and, and go to 1967. Okay. I was all of uh, you know, my early teens that time, actually, in grade eight in my school. And in those days, you know, and of course, you know, we didn't have any of the Indian uh, school board so it used to be senior Cambridge our school the final uh, class 11 as you should call that used to have a senior Cambridge in the UK so we had to choose a stream either to go to science or to go to commerce and that was decided at grade eight and then of course you chose the stream you wanted to follow in life there was a caveat anybody who wanted to pick up the science stream must have at least 60 percent marks to be able to go to the science stream and I think almost everybody wanted to go to science, it was aspirational. And I think I would have had no problem because why he was among the better students at school. November, we were almost finished with all our studies and there was a teacher out there, God bless him, Mr. Roy. Uh, he was just sitting in the class and just asked him because we were closing the year and you know, the years to close in December those days, early December. So he's asking, okay, what do you want to do? He's just getting, talking to different students out there. And almost every second person said they want to do a doctor and every other person said I want to be an engineer. Everybody obviously wanted to go to science. So he mentioned that, does anybody want to be a CA? Or we had no clue what a CA was at that time. Never heard about it. So he gave us a few facts and he said, you know, of course, very few CAs in India, 1967, only 5,000 CAs at that time in India. Very, very difficult examination. Less than 2% people who give the exam actually pass the exam. But it's a very well-respected profession. And he named a few well-known CAs. We knew, we knew nothing about CAs. But he said, oh, if you want to be a CA, you would prefer to go into commerce. Because you know science may not lead you to become a CA. And that was the thinking in those days in 67. So I went home and I told my parents that I want to choose the commerce stream. My father was, of course, very disappointed and annoyed. We were in a joint family. Other members of the family told me, you're a fool. You know, you're making a decision which will spoil your life. Why are you doing this? You, know, you have the opportunity to actually go and you know, go into science and achieve what was required. Because doctors, engineers, scientists, very well respected, very well paid, and so on and so forth. I said, no, I really want to do CA, I'll do commerce. My mother helped me at that point in time. And she told me, if you believe that you think you'll be successful, go ahead and do it. That was my first lesson in believing in what I think I should be believing in. Moving forward, I think this value has helped me across in many other areas and ways. I, when I decided to go and do my MBA from London Business School in Wharton, uh, when I picked up my job and worked in what I was doing, and I was one of the very young uh, CFOs and you know, I was, inculcated the board of directors of Assam Company Limited, a listed company at the age of 35. The journey I had thereafter as CXO CEO of several companies in India and abroad, I think this was the value which kind of kept me going that if you believe in something, you do it. Another threshold which came about was 2006. I was in the pinnacle of my corporate career and uh, I just felt saturated. I felt that there's something I need to do different from just being, you know, working, you know. I felt that I could do something for others who could learn from my experience, okay, uh, my knowledge. And the best way of doing that was to perhaps go and teach. So SPJMR was my first school that I actually came to and, and asked if I could, you know, be a professor out here, if I could teach out here. Okay, this was, that was the time. And uh, I was very happily accepted out here. Uh, Dean Dr. Srikant made me a full professor straight away. He said, you know, your experience is fine. You know, you're a student. Two weeks into uh, SPJMR, I received a letter from a headhunter who had been pursuing me earlier as well, 
saying that I've been giving me an offer to work as the country head of an MNC in India. And, you know, offering me a salary, which was X number of times more than what I was getting at SPJMR. Please understand this thing. When I joined SPJMR, it was a very tough decision because among other things, it meant giving up your emoluments, giving up your pay to a large extent. So I went to Dr. Srikant and I showed him that letter. I said, I've got this appointment letter. I just wanted to show it to you. So he's, he's looked at me in my eyes and said, so when are you leaving? I said, I'm not. I told the letter and threw it in the dust with me. I do not believe teaching is a profession. I believe that teaching, for me, teaching is basically shaping young minds to prepare them for the future, to change the face of mankind. That's what my belief is. That's why I'm here as a teacher. And I think this value of being able to believe and do what you believe in is so important. I know there are a lot of young people out here in the audience today. So my message to all of you would be, go by your heart, see what your heart says, do what you believe is right to do, and then have the courage to actually implement that. Thank you. Mm -hmm.